What's up everybody? Uh, I don't know right now. I'm kind of messed up in the head and dazed and whatnot. But I do like this new world that we're embarking upon where people are more open to each other through the internet. A uh, little bit of history. I'm 30 years old right now, which is cool. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, lifelong fitness and, and, and all that is what you need to worry about more or less. Um, but the thing that is interesting is that uh, I started using the internet heavily at uh, the age of 14. Which is, you know, what do you do at a 14 year old? As much as I look back on my teenage years and say to myself, oh boy, I must have been having a ball. Not really. Same thing, you know, you're horny and you want to just jerk off all the time. That's pretty much what being a teenager is all about. And surprise, surprise, nothing really changes. You get older and that you still want to, you're still horny and you still want to do your thing. So, the thing that I wanted to discuss today, really deeply discuss today, is the Han Solo standalone film. Uh, I don't know. I can't get one thing going to, to give a call to Lucasfilm to to try to I'm gonna make the, this the you know the plea here I'm gonna say it right here on the internet I want to play Lando Calrissian for Philip and for Philip Lord and Chris Miller I want to you know provide the best performance of that character that they'll ever see I also want to you know avoid having to work these terrible jobs that I've been working. And if you get a job that you love and you're passionate about, that's what life's all about in the end. You know, uh, life is a strange bedfellow. But if you do what you want to do, if you live the way you want to live, it's worth it. Uh, and I can't see any other justification for my existence in this world except to do the whole, you know, play the role. And it, it, would bliss, it would be a blissful experience, you know. There would be no trepidation. There would be no hesitation. If I give me a call and I get the job, because I can see it in Alden's face when I look at his interviews. He's elated. He's over the moon. Uh, I can definitely see that, you know, regardless of, you know, his, 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 I believe that inside, you know, he's terrified. He's taking on a character that is above and beyond so it's very much a monumental task to try to play a character created by Harrison Ford you know and so it's not going to be a simple task for him and uh, not my problem I'm on the other side of the fence but uh, yeah I'm just gonna say you know I'd love to I'd love to participate my role's probably not gonna be that big the movie's gonna be about Han Solo so we're gonna see his life his times, and then of course he's gonna cross paths with Lando Calrissian. I was, I went to Attack of the Clones. I went to Revenge of the Sith. While I was at Attack of the Clones back then, I was thinking a young Lando would probably be around back then, and we would see him. We'd see young Lando. We saw young versions of Greedo. We saw young versions of uh, how many other characters? We see the you know the 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 younger version of them we got Bill Organa we got you know the Lars family we even got we got a lot of the prequels were pretty much a, a like a who's who collection of uh, old characters coming back so I was figuring in my little head oh I'm, I'm a, you know I'm the exact age that Lando would be in the prequels so they probably give me a call and just say come and do it do the job and that was maybe 15 years ago so you know it's a hell of a long time later, and now they're actually doing it. They're actually showcasing young Han Solo, and this might, this film might take place somewhere around the time of the prequels. So you might even have, you know, aspects of the prequels coming into the film, and you see the whole thing from the perspective of of, uh, of Han Solo, and that'd be interesting. That would be fascinating to see what Han was doing back then during the Jedi Purge, during the entire thing with uh, the Jedi going around and, and, and searching for all these things and all the things that happened in the prequels. What was Han doing back then? So we, 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 we definitely explore that and uh, yeah, I'm pissing my pants about it. It is a scary idea. You, you take this role 
and suddenly you're gonna be scrutinized up and down sideways and you know in your butthole everywhere you're gonna get so scrutinized and it is it is a it is a crazy thing to ask for because you know they want people with experience for this thing they don't want just some guy off the street and that's precisely what i am maybe i'm living here and getting odd jobs everywhere but tech technically i'm nobody i'm not an actor i don't have any acting experience so that's what they don't want they really don't want to hire somebody who's fresh um so you know but i know star wars you know i was you know my fondest memory in my whole life will always be that day i was at um cross county standing at the bus stop i was uh 14 something like that and i had my uh I had my Star Wars uh, Master of Terrace Kasi CD inside of my CD player. I was looking at my, uh, you know, I was reading the manual for the game so I could learn the fight moves. And, you know, I was just so, it was just a beautiful moment. You know, it was just a peaceful moment. I was listening to the entire Star Wars soundtrack and reading a book with, you know, Luke Skywalker and, and, and all these characters in it. And that was my, you know, my moment of just complete bliss in life. That 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 you know, just standing there looking at looking at the world through the to the through the prism of the Star Wars universe. Just standing there. And I'm me. You know, I, I don't I never took into consideration. I always knew I looked like Lando Carissa. I never thought it would be a potentiality for me to jump into his shoes and play the role. But it's standing here right in front of my face, so it's hard to look at that and say, oh, they're going to pick somebody else, they're going to pick another guy. He looks more like Billy Dee than me. Oh, he's going to do it. No. You know, if I wasn't a Star Wars fan, would I even get the role? That's the question. Would I even want the role, you know? Probably not. Maybe a uh, casting director would see me walking around and say, come do this, this role, Lando Carissian. And I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know anything about that shit. So that'd be a different universe me, you know what I mean? Uh, mirror universe. That would be the one where I don't know nothing about Star Wars. But no, I, I know Star Wars too much. I mean, I've dedicated so... I can write you a PhD level goddamn thesis on the damn thing. It's just something that I've been into for years. Years and years of deep studying the, the complexity of... And it's not just about Star Wars. Star Wars is a beautiful thing because it ignites in everybody and kids an interest in filmmaking. That's what it's really about. As much as I was going to Star Wars forums as a kid and just, you know, hanging out, talking Star Wars, really I learned a shitload about film because half of the people at those forums are young filmmaking students talking about the filmmaking process. And of course, if you watch what Lucas was doing all those years and shit, making the Star Wars movies, you're basically learning how films are made. And it's, you know, and you watch the film as it's finished, and you say, okay, and you watch the documentaries on how Lucas created the film, and all these things. And so you learn a lot about the filmmaking world, and what it takes, and how it's done. And it's laborious, and it's complex, and, you know, it is a, it is a task. But, yeah, I was there throughout the entire prequel thing. I saw how they made them. You know, I'm, you know, to, for me to jump into the role of Lando would just be like butter. You know what I mean? Because I've witnessed what it takes to make these movies. I see the way they do it. You know, so I could definitely play play in that field, considering I know what they have to do. Um, I know where they went wrong. That's the real thing. I know why the prequels are a little bit less interesting and, and kind of dull compared to the new trilogy and the old trilogy. So. I hope that we can punch it up a little more with the new movie and make it a lot more Star Wars-y than the prequels ended up being. Um, hopefully they work. And, you know, I can definitely see this thing working, you know. Alden looks like a young Harrison Ford. He definitely has that, that swagger, that, that weird look to him that, he, that, you know, that Ford embodies. And uh, it's going to be tough for him to, to, to work that out. But we can do this. I know we can do this. You know, I'll walk into the scene. People will immediately say, that's young Lando. He'll walk into the scene. People will immediately say, that's young 
uh, Han Solo and then we move on from there. We don't even think about what the process is to make the characters, you know, just let the characters exist in the frame. Let the characters breathe. Let the characters grow. And, and just, you know, it doesn't have to be spot on match. Because it's like, it's almost, it's a little too much to ask to try to perfectly match everything, you know? So, a lot like what the prequels were doing, like with Ewan McGregor, you know, he's one of the most amazing, you know, you would literally think of him as a young Obi-Wan because of the way he played that character. Everyone loves the fact that he did it so well, you know. Uh, and that's what we gotta do. Just basically do whatever Ian did, Ewan did. And, uh, we'll see, I mean, I'm serious about it, nobody else is. That's the problem I have. People look at Mr. Mr. Alden, uh, I don't know his last name, but they're gonna look at him and say, okay, this dude's gonna do it, he's gonna be all right. They're gonna look at me and they're gonna say, have you ever acted before? Do you even know what acting is? You, 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 you're just some guy. So, that's gonna be the issue that we have to work on. Uh, and the problem is that, yeah, I'm just, you know, I can't stand people, I can't stand the way they have attitudes, so it's tough to kind of, you know, juggle that, juggle that whole thing, and of course, it, look at what, look at what it does to people, you know, when, when you, when you put yourself out there on that level, where you're going to be a star, you know, you're going to be on the, you're going to be on a big freaking screen being watched by millions of people, this is not no little movie they make, and they're not making no freaking goddamn something diaries or something bullshit woman film or something this is a big ass movie I'm gonna be on billions of screens everybody's gonna see it George Lucas himself is gonna watch the movie Mark Hamill says he wants to watch it you're all you're putting yourself out there man and I'm a guy who grew up in the Bronx and just went to little school over there and and didn't do shit with his life just sat around playing video games you don't go from that to being on stage in front of the entire freaking world, being, you just don't, you know, that doesn't really work. So, it's a damn tough thing. The internet is, is a different ball of wax compared to film. The internet's just the internet. It's porno and it's stupidness, but film is gonna be in a giant box somewhere where after nuclear fallout happens, they're gonna keep certain films alive for the eternity and shit. So that's a big deal. You know, it's a mortality. You know, we're all gonna just fade away, but film not gonna fade away. All the toys, all the things that they're gonna make, so and you're gonna be rich. You know? Uh I'm very happy for Alden. You know. He's pretty much gonna print money now. He never has to work again after he's he plays Han Solo. He's gonna be like Oh my God! You know he's gonna get royalties from the movie. He's gonna get something. So he's gonna get a big paycheck first of all. You know he's through the he's through the roof. You know I'm I'm pretty sure he's like oh my God I'm freaking rich. So you know it's you know I mean that's a beautiful thing to not have to worry about money. You know what I mean? Once you get that behind you, you can explore your real interests in life instead of scrounging around for money all the time. So, if I get this role, I'll never have to work. Ever. I'll be having enough money to do anything I want. And then, of course, you know, I look at the other, you know, Hollywood's a strange bedfellow. You can make a lot of money, even if you're black, even if you're a minority. There's money to be made. They, you know, they need people of color in the world of film. So... There's an entire group of black film professionals and stuff like that. And Billy D himself, who will tell you, yes, there is a need for that. So he's supply and demand. It's business. If you just play that role and, and provide that, then you're going to be all right because they'll service you. And, of course, the movie is going to make tons of money. So your, your salary is nothing compared to the actual income of the film itself. So, yeah. They'll give you what you want, as long as you give them what they want, in the end. And, uh... I just hope they don't overlook me, you know? I just hope they say, yeah, 
we are thinking about you. We are saying to ourselves, you do have that look. You do want to do it. There's potential for you to jump on it. If they don't even care, that's the thing that's going to piss me off. You know, at least if they said, okay, this dude looks like the dude damn close. And we are looking for that kind of guy. Maybe we should consider him, you know. Uh, so, you know, I'm not just saying I look like the dude. I do look like Lando. But also, you know, I've studied Billy D's performance. Upside down, sideways, backwards, and forwards. Yeehaw! You know? Ah! I, I, all the little shit that Billy D did, I can give you. I can give you all of that crap. You know? I guarantee them to you, you won't bat an eyelash. You just think it's young Billy D, 30 years old. So, it's up to you. If you want to make the dumbass mistake of hiring some weird Hispanic looking dude to play Lando, that's on you. I'm not gonna, it's not my problem, brother. If you want to do this thing properly, make a lot of money, get bitches, get a big ass yacht, have a party, let's go. Let's go. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Thank you for watching.